I read a book about Michelangelo. He is seen, I think, as being one of the great transcendent artists of all time, along with Leonardo, Rembrandt, Van Gogh, and maybe Picasso. He's one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He's also not to my taste. I appreciate his extraordinary skill, but I'm not crazy about religious iconography, and his robust naked males remind me of the models you can find in fashion magazines advertising for aftershave, talcum powder, and underwear. The book told the story of his life against the background of six of his greatest works, the Pietà, the David, the Sistine Chapel, the Medici Tomb at San Lorenzo, the Last Judgment, and his participation in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. While I was reading the book, I was thinking about Chuck Jones, not because Michelangelo drew cartoons, although he did, preliminary sketches of proposed artwork in the Renaissance were called cartoons, but that's not why I was thinking about Chuck Jones. In order to create the statues and later the paintings, Michelangelo studied anatomy through dissection of cadavers, a practice which disgusted and disturbed him greatly, but he pressed on with it because he knew instinctively that if he wanted to render the human form and do it convincingly, it would require the in-depth knowledge of muscles, tendons, ligaments, veins, arteries, and bones. Similarly, when Chuck Jones was going to include a squirrel in one of his films, or a bull or a horse, he would go out and study the construction and behavior of that animal. Great artists do their homework. Mark Twain has a short story that features a blue jay, and the precise habits of that quarrelsome bird are built into the tale, making it a real pleasure to read. Another comparison between Michelangelo and Chuck Jones is that both men were storytellers. That is the absolute basis for, of all of their work. Both men told character-driven narratives. For Chuck Jones, it's a series of jokes, gags that build to a natural, if unexpected, climax. The Pietà tells a story, though it is mute stone. It is a moment in time that any viewer will recognize, presented with high drama. It is surprising and characteristic of its creator in the youthful visage of the Madonna and the pitiful body of the Christ. David also tells a story of the shepherd boy who is about to do battle with a fierce and terrifying opponent. Michelangelo's paintings are pure storytelling. Both men worked for other people. Jones for Warner Brothers, Michelangelo for various wealthy patrons, usually cardinals and popes, officers of the powerful Catholic Church. Warner Brothers did little to interfere with the work of Chuck Jones. As long as he made money, he was free to pursue his muse. Michelangelo also, for the most part, did as he pleased. He got away with nearly all of it, save for the nudes in The Last Judgment. That offended so many puritanical church leaders that another artist was commissioned to paint clothing on them. Finally, both men worked beyond the narrow confines of their expected production, creating art out of paid labor. Jones fashioned spectacular entertainment out of what could have been kids' cartoons and accessory to music, Looney Tunes. Michelangelo was hired to create works of religious devotion, but it was in his nature to produce sculpture and painting that openly boasted of the prowess of their maker, the artist, Michelangelo. It may seem frivolous to compare Chuck Jones and Michelangelo, to look upon the prodigious 17-foot David and think of another classic hero, Bugs Bunny. On the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, God is in the process of animating Adam. Michelangelo is painting that creation, along with the subsequent fall of man. Chuck Jones is playing the very same game, only with a roadrunner and a coyote. Their differences are only apparent. The majesty of the church, the silliness of Elmer Fudd and Daffy Duck, not real. They were both fantastic animators. <laughs>